Hey everyone, it's Spicy Sushi. Uh, today I want to bring you my Harvest for Profit guide for 3.16 Scourge League. If you aren't familiar with my channel, I'm basically uh, the Harvest guy uh, when it comes to a trade league economy. I don't necessarily focus on actually crafting like big items or like uh, item crafting specifically in Harvest, but I try to maximize harvest uh, to its full potential when it comes to literally just currency generation because that's kind of what harvest is nowadays uh, you can check out my previous videos if you would like to see uh, you know the kind of analysis I do when it comes to harvest but for this video I am going to go over uh, some massive changes that came with 3.16 when it comes to making money from harvest one of the reasons harvest is just so absurdly profitable is because there are very niche crafts that I would say over like 99% of the uh, you know population on this game just don't know about and they're just absolute currency pumpers and so that's what we're going to go over today I most recently the other day ended a three-day challenge with harvest and we ended up with over 300 exalts so we were, we were getting about over 100 exalts of profit every single day and I'm going to go over with you uh, how I did that now, originally, I didn't plan on making an updated Harvest Guide because after my first video this league, I really thought nothing had changed when it comes to harvesting for profit, but I was uh, very wrong. A lot has changed, and I want to go over these massive changes with you. Before, but before we dive into it, I do want to give a forewarning. Harvest is incredibly complex. I do base my content around it, and I do, and I do try through my guides to to uh, make it more digestible for the average player. Uh, there are ways to be very casual and yet still make good money out of Harvest, but to make these massive amounts of money that me and other uh, more experienced people make every day, it does require a lot of learning. It is a it is a massive learning curve, but I enjoyed going through this learning curve because I'm not really a fan of farming Nemesis content and like more Headhunter juiced content. Uh, it, it, it is a lot of work for me when it comes to like clicking the ground like a million times per map. I know you can run like mouse wheel things to not click it, but it's just not really my type of my cup of tea. I really do like how chill Harvest is outside of buying bases. And so that's why I prefer it. So anyway, let me go ahead and give you the table of contents for our video today. So number one, we're, we're going to cover uh, the massive changes that have come with 3.16 regarding Harvest and how they impacted this uh, 300 over 300x from these three days. Uh, number two, I'm going to overview the four ways of farming Harvest, including Watchstone setup, path of progression that you can take regarding your budget, basically how you can work your way up from little to no investment all the way to uh, what I do where I'm buying the Sacred Grove Sextants, I'm having like 40 plus X plus of invested bases, doing massive crafts uh, through uh, more advanced ways of crafting with Harvest in which you'll have to have like hundreds of exalts of liquid some days. And so this part was going to cover multiple ways to farm Harvest and uh, how I prefer to do it as well as some build recommendations depending on the way you want to go about farming, farming Harvest. More like I'm talking more about like if you want to do it naturally or if you want to use uh, the Sacred Grove Sextant. Harvest is incredibly, incredibly easy content since you can just run your map scoured at low red tier. So the build's not really that important, so I'm not going to cover it too much, but I will, you know... I will link you to um, a Harvest Runner guide that uh, I made with Mr. Khan, and I'll show you, like, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, and before we jump into part one, guys, I just want to let you know I do have a Patreon set up uh, where you can access literally all of my Harvest spreadsheets. I have a Harvest Crafting Cookbook coming out. I have, like, there's a massive spreadsheet with all my reforges. And so thank you so much for my patrons before we get into this. Uh, you guys are what make, you know, this possible for me. Um, but with that uh, covered, let's go ahead and jump into part one. So what's changed in 3.16 when it comes to uh, farming harvest for profit? Now, I I'm really not going to go over the passive point nerf since I already covered that in my very first harvest video of this league. But basically, tier fours are much more rare, and that's really all that's changed. But they've always been pretty rare. Like, I've gone hundreds of harvests without ever seeing a tier four. And this league, you know, I got lucky, got a tier four every 50 or like 20 harvests at the start of the league. And then I'm like probably over 100 right now. Like, tier fours have always been exceptionally rare, but they are really like you can expect to have massive dry streaks but the thing is is that harvest has never relied on tier fours for the money if you hit the good tier fours of course you're going to make absolute bank 
but uh, like with Augma Influence being over 35 exalts now, but we're gonna assume that we never hit that and this guide is not going to cover tier fours. What I really wanna go over today is the fact that Harvest is actually now the absolute best, most deterministic way to roll certain flask modifier Path of Exile. After the change to reforges, you can now basically alteration reforge a flask since there's no more, uh, you know, normal to rare or magic to rare reforges in Path of Exile. It's really a any item can be used as a, as a regular chaos reforge. It will upgrade uh, normal and magic to rare if it can, but if it can't, it'll just reforge it normally, AKA flasks, because they can't be rare. You can't have a rare flask. But for example, a granite flask with tier one increased armor, which is a defense tag, and 25% increased effect can go for over two exalts right now to mage blood players. And this is actually quite easy to hit with a defense reforge. Um, I keep my flasks in my inventory and I have like augment orbs in there as well. So whenever I have an open prefix after hitting like tier one increase armor on a granite, I can augment and try to hit something decent. There are so many prefix mods that are uh, valuable, such as, uh, you know, getting charges on hit, increased duration, uh, charges on cr chance to gain charges on crit. And obviously the 25% increased effect is gonna be incredible for mage blood players since uh, their flasks are always in effect and so they just wanna buff effect. So these reforges can work on every flask and there are so many combinations that sell for large profit that it almost seems unintended for something to be so strong in Harvest and to be allowed to exist in the game given how much GGG seems to dislike Harvest. Uh, like let's say you want tier one chance to grant flash charges on crit as well as tier one increased crit chance on your diamond flask. Well, you can crit critical strike more common reforge this now on a high item level diamond flask and get that and sell it from multiple exalts. Let's say you want tier one increased evasion on a jade flask with seven charges gained when you get hit. Um, defense more common until you get tier one evasion and then augment orb and try to hit that. But there are, like I said, other prefixes. There are so many that sell for 50 plus chaos up, up to three exalts uh, that it is an exceptional way to print money and honestly just crafting flash should cover all of your investment when it comes to harvest uh, especially if you're just using the sextant uh, since there are so many people running nemesis right now and buying nemesis sextants there's a lot of people rolling sextants harvest uh, sacred groves are in a massive abundance right now and they're actually uh, quite cheap at 1.4 exalts per four harvest and they really haven't changed all lead because they're just there's just so many being printed and there's not that actually many people running harvest and so the prices aren't just skyrocketing um, now now the second thing I want to go over is that since Parandus has been removed the primal cl uh, crush claw is actually always profit and it can never brick now, originally from the seed, you could get the craft, exchange a unique item for Paranda's coins. But as of this league, um, that's been removed because originally last league, it was a complete loss because Paranda's uh, was never really a good use of your, you know, unique item to Paranda's coins as of last league. And so normally you would want like the Harbinger craft or the Bestiary Lure craft is the best currently, uh, but it would sometimes brick with Prandus. Now that that can't happen, you can only ever get Harbinger or Beast craft. Kraesic or whatever or lures, they sell for over 40 chaos each in bulk right now. And so it is extremely lucrative. I think for at the end of a day, I sold over seven exalts just in Bestiary Lures, which paid for almost all the investment for the entire day. So it is quite exceptional. Harvest does get so much more profitable deeper into the league you go. And this is a prime example of that uh, because of how, because beast farming is, is becoming very high investment now. And therefore you're going to make a lot of money off beastiary lures. Now this craft is literally just an aspect of the crab rare item. Any rare with aspect of the crab or a Kraesic, uh unique item is going to uh, be able to be changed into this lure. And for the Harbinger, any unique Harbinger piece, like uh, just fragments that go for like one to three chaos, you can change into a Harbinger map. This is always profit. It's not very much profit if you only get like tier five or like tier 10 Harbinger maps, but tier 15s and infused beachheads are um, a lot of money and, and, and it's a good use of your time. It, it is worth going out and buying those fragments in my opinion. 
Uh, but anyway, lastly, for this part one, I would like to go over enchant weapon crafts. These are normally found on red seeds plots as a tier three seed, and they allow you to apply various enchantments to your weapons, such as uh, area of effect per quality or attack speed per quality. Normally, these don't go for very much and rarely sell on TFT, but this league with the scourge mechanic, people are mass scourging harvest enchanted weapons in the attempt to hit really really good scourge mods while also having the harvest enchant since you can't enchant it after it's been corrupted unlike helmets and belts with the new uh, labyrinth item uh, so normally in a league there isn't much demand for this but now people are constantly buying enchanted unique weapons to bake through scourge such as area of effect on void batteries and attack speed on like a replica frost breath for st for strength stackers right now i i was selling these items I would buy void batteries for like 30 chaos and I was selling them for an exalt on average. Uh, same with the frost breath. So it is quite exceptional. These three changes alone should be providing massive, massive profit uh, if you do run harvest. Just these three. Um, so anyway, part two, we are going to go over uh, the four ways of farming harvest. Since a lot of people ask how to set up harvest and how they get into it because they uh, watch my stream and they want to know how i get started and so uh we're going to cover that all right and let's go ahead and get into the uh four ways to farm harvest now there's actually like three ways it's more so even two ways but i'm going to split it up into four different categories and i'm going to go over my preferred way to farm it and also like maybe some build recommendations so let's go over watchstones first so i can just get this out of the way Mature watchstones are the absolute best uh, watchstones for harvest farming. Now, this modifier on here is a prefix modifier, and it is exceptionally rare on the uh, platinum watchstones. You could alt spam this, but it, I've heard it takes thousands, and I would just rather buy it rather than you know kill my wrist trying to roll these. That being said, I'm pretty sure these mature watchstones are. Yeah, they are 3.2x, and so to jump into Harvest with the absolute best watchstones, you would want at least three of these, and that is going to set you back about 13 exalts. Therefore, personally, I don't like going below this when it comes to investment, uh, and so I would recommend doing some other strategy but until you can afford these kind of watchstones. But um, if you just really want to jump into Harvest, you can always do Bountiful watchstones, now these are quite strong. Uh, the plants harvested have a uh, flat increased percent chance to, or just a flat chance to grant an additional craft. What this means is when you get a harvest seed, that seed has a chance to be more than one of that specific seed. Uh, so let's say like a reforged crit, you can have two reforged crits and it rolls individually each bountiful stone. So if you had more than one stone, uh, it would roll this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. You could possibly change one craft to even seven crafts. And that is because the Haywork area actually comes with uh, Bountiful Watchstones right here. They are actually um, tier one Bountiful Watchstones. These three little small passives. So they are quite strong. But the best possible way would be to run as many matures as possible, depending on if you're doing natural farming or sextant farming now for uh natural farming there are two ways to go about doing natural farming the first way is the way i covered in my video from last league you basically would be doing pretty much getting as much out of your maps as you can possible in hay work while you do harvest when you get it so what i mean by that is you can do cyrus on a on the rotation you would out your maps you would do the scourge mechanic bake items and you would choose, you would obviously choose your three harvest passes right here, but you would choose a separate lead mechanic to go alongside this uh, that would not take too much time investment. Now, a lot of people take intelligence gathering as their two extra passives so they can work on farming Katarina, uh, work on building up their safe houses. Uh, but I prefer Essence if I were to do more than one lead mechanic simply because Essence is on the map device uh, right there. And uh, you can, even though if you stock up on a bunch of bad essences like Deafenings, uh, like I have right here, these Anguish and 83 of Torments, I can always reroll these through Harvest, through a tier three seed over to like Spites or, um, you know, see ones that actually go for quite a lot of money. 
because spites are over like, I think they're nearly 20 chaos now at this point. So that's what you would do for the first natural farming method. You get harvest with this passive one in every six maps on average. Now, obviously you can get incredibly unlucky with that. You can go 20 maps dry. That's just how, that's just, you know, how RNG works. And, um, you know, it can be very painful if you, if you're doing very long maps, if you're spending over five to 10 minutes in each of your maps and you're not getting a harvest, but once every hour, it can be very painful because harvests are not always going to be good. Uh, you could get a bad harvest. And so if you spend an hour to get a bad harvest, it feels quite bad. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And that is why I don't really prefer this method. I like to pump out as many harvests as I can per hour. And so that is the second way that you can farm natural harvest is through a harvest farmer, a harvest runner, I mean. And uh, Mr. Khan and I, uh, actually, he helped me with a harvest runner build. Now, there are many ways to do this, but this was like the easiest way that we could get it out for like casual and more beginner players uh, to not make it complicated. It's a toxic rain with almost 600% increased movement speed that basically is meant for just doing a scoured map. It, it's very low DPS, and so we do scoured maps because harvest does not matter if it's scoured. And so usually you would hover around the tier 11 through tier 12 because once you're in the red maps, uh, the tier does not really have a significant effect. I have never noticed a significant effect. And so you would chill like maybe dig, maybe canyon is a very preferred one, atoll. You would basically run in a circle and if you get the harvest you go in if you don't get a harvest you just portal out and maps are actually very very cheap like this tier 11 canyon is only four chaos and so if you're getting it one in every six maps it's like anywhere between 18 and 24 chaos per harvest so that is the second natural method and there are a lot of people in the discord and on the twitch channel that do prefer that method but i also want to go over my method now my method is i play whatever build i want but i guarantee harvest in every single map and that is through the irresistible temptation or not sorry that is through a unique watchstone with sacred grove on it now this is from an awakened sextant and i run three mature i slot this in and i get at we're four maps in a row i am guaranteed a harvest now the technically the natural farming method is better because you can have four mature watchstones but with the sacred grove sextant i don't have to worry about uh you know i can chill out i don't have to run a super fast niche build i can just go into a harvest every single map now the issue with this and the reason this isn't what everyone does is because it's not it has a high entry cost 1.4 to 1.5 exalts per four harvest now for me i am very experienced in harvest and so this is not an issue uh it is not hard at all for me to get more than one exalt per harvest on average and so this is really not an issue like if you get a keep prefix or keep suffix which we'll cover in the seed part of this video after this um you're really not going to have an issue paying it off you, if you get one of those per four harvest you already pay off all of your investment and um so yeah that is not really an issue for me the way i roll these or buy them is through sextant blocking i cover that already in um in a video from before but i'll just give you a little demonstration so basically we take our awakened sextants here because you can only get them on awakened or higher so you can do elevated as well um you'd want to get a unique stone that has at least four uses on it now this one has 18 so i'll just show this for a demonstration you want to have uh two monster pack mods this is monsters deal fire monster deal chaos you can use a prime sextant to roll these to not have to use awakened and then you want a shrine modifier and this makes it so harvest is like one in every 80 or so, one in every 80 to 100. I always forget the calculation, but uh, you will always profit while getting Sacred Groves as long as you sell the Nemesis and sell others. That's why we do unique stones, because you want to sell the, the enchants that are not Harvest, or uh, and that's why when you buy them, they're always not going to be like Platinum Haywork, because no one would run Sextants on Platinum Hayworks, obviously. So yeah, so for like Elevated, I would roll that. Okay, that's Xana. But uh, I'm just doing this for a video demonstration. I really don't care about money at this point. But um, so yeah, that's how you would do it. And for like something like uh, this, well, I'm not going to roll over, but you know, well, I don't care at this point. So anyway, you, you would roll through Awakened Sextants until you hit something profitable. 
which I'm not hitting anything profitable, so it doesn't really matter, but, well, Hunt of Traders is pretty decent. So, yeah, you would sell the ones that are profit. I have a video on this. I'll link that as well, uh, but, uh, yeah, there you have that. So, now the fourth way to farm harvest, we've gone over three ways, is Xana method. Now, I people always talk about that they love doing Xana method. I really do not enjoy Xana method whatsoever, but I'll go ahead and show you the setup. You would take Master of the Atlas, you would take Pass Not Taken, and you would take Close Allies. Uh, you don't have to take Close Allies, but it is recommended because you'll probably want to be killing the map boss while you're in Haywork in order to get more Xana missions. And what you'll do is you'll just do the map as normal, any of the previous three methods that I talked about, but you'll also put Xana on your map device and uh, on your map. And that's because Xana will most likely have a harvest, like 50% of the maps you do. Now, the issue with this is Xana has a completely separate atlas, and so you're not going to get benefit of watchstones or passives. Now, you could just get lucky. I mean, there's, there's been plenty of people that have gotten augment influences. There are over 40 exalts from Xana Harvest. It can definitely happen, but it is extremely unlikely, and I just honestly don't waste my time with Xana Harvest just because I, I like the bonuses from the, uh, you know, the atlas and the watchstones. So, yeah, th those are the four methods. Now, to close this video... We're going to go ahead and jump into uh, the seed tier list. I'm, I'm going to keep it really short and simple, uh, but yeah, let's dive into that. Hey everyone, so I figured I would kind of do like an updated uh, seed priority PowerPoint presentation for you guys uh, since I did this last time. Uh, and I figured I, you know, I still have the slide. It's a little bit updated and I have a little bit more to talk about. So I might as well uh, go through it for this video now. You can look at this as a tier list, a seed tier list. A lot of people league last league asked me why if I could have included a tier list. This is literally the tier list, okay? Um, this is the tier list of seeds. Now, uh, if you want to know exactly like what to use reforges on, like I said, I have my spreadsheet, my harvest crafting cook, but like I have two videos, one video for cluster how I find clusters, and one video for how I find rares. I linked them earlier, and they're in the description. So go check those out if you want help finding bases. That's how I go through it. Uh, and I have spreadsheets available on my Patreon that go over exactly what I use for every single reforge as well, if you would just like to fast forward to that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, seed tier zero. Always pick zero exception these are your tier four seeds they are exceptionally rare i have found them one in every 50 harvests and at this point in the league uh the only one that is not a lot of money is the one in the middle which is the synthesis one it is just unlucky this is why i tell people not to like just grind out harvest and burn out trying to pursue these tier four seeds they have massive payouts they really do but it is just not worth it because if you put everything in harvest upon finding a tier four seed and you get a synth one it'll just kill you inside so pretend these don't exist that they're unicorns but if you get them you are going to get a lot of money uh, besides the synth one so this can be augment influence reforge influence more common reforge influence more common is like 10 exalts and aug influence is like over 40 exalts now so massive payout the one on the right is going to be a fracture and these are like eight exalts minimum at this point they can go up to like 20 exalts i think i'm not totally sure but yeah if you get these you win but let's go ahead and go to our s tier seeds these are going to be the ones you see more often and i want you guys to know what's best so you're going to see these seeds quite often if you use mature watchstones and that's why i want to go over it uh and this is the um the blue seed the primal rex is going to be uh splinters breach stone and emblems this is just basically going to let you reforge a breach stone over to another breach stone this is how you get like chayulas pretty often this is how you get um this is how you get timeless emblems to maraketh and templar it is good money but it can brick now, I have it on S tier still, because I think it is still S tier, but definitely I would not prioritize it over the two on the right here. I, I, I Because if you get a pale court key, absolutely useless. Uh, so honestly, the, it, it is technically good by itself, but if the other plot has one of the two on the right, I would not choose this. Um, because the one to the right of this, Fossils, Essence, Delirium Orbs, Oils, and Catalysts, it is almost always going to be decent although it can just not give you anything good like if you reroll a dense fossil to like a scorched fossil you're not making money 
but um, on average, you will get some good profit out of it. But the one on the right here is so important. I see a lot of people forget about this Vivid Devourer bulb. These 10 random, you can actually get a tier four and augment influence, all kinds of things from this 10 seed. Always pick this. I would consider this almost tier zero. It is very close to that, but the other plot could potentially have something that's better than this. It's very uncommon. So it's not like a tier four seed, but uh, you know, this is very, very strong. But now we have this league, we have an update to the tier to the tier S list, and that is the Primal Crush Claw. I would actually consider this maybe the best uh, S tier seed besides the 10 random on the yellow because it can no longer brick. As I said earlier, you can no longer get Pirandus as an option from this, and so it will always be Bestiary Lure or Harbinger Piece. Now, if you get Bestiary, it is always gonna be 25 to 30 plus Chaos Profit for each one you get. And all you have to do is put in an aspect of the crab uh, rare item, which is like 20 chaos minimum right now. And that's just a free 25 to 35 chaos profit. The harbinger piece is always good to use. It's always profit because if you throw in a piece, you could get uh, like a tier 15 or a infused beachhead. And uh, that's going to be a lot of money there. And so this is super important to know now that this cannot brick. And remember this thing right here, because that is uh, what you want to look for now. Uh, tier A, prioritize when two or three plus. I, I don't think this beats um, a tier S seed if it's by itself because uh, they have a pretty decent chance to just straight up brick. And so I would not normally go with them if there's only one because this Vivid Vulture, everyone hypes up the Scarab one, but it's only a one in three chance that it's going to be an upgrade to Winged Scarab. And even then, it is not totally guaranteed that you're going to go from Gilded to Winged. It is like an 80% chance or something, 75 to 80 in my experience. But there, there is a chance that it doesn't. And it's only a 1 in 3 chance that you'll even get the upgrade Winged. And so that's why I would not prioritize this higher than Tier S. The Primal Scrabbler. This is very important. A lot of people don't know this is how you get keep prefix keep suffix it is i believe a one in six or a one in five chance to get a keep pre reforge keeping prefixes reforge keeping suffixes it goes for a 1.5 exalt minimum in tft right now uh and so it is incredibly good but i would not pick it if it's only one by itself and the other plot has some good modifiers or, or some good seeds because uh, like I said, it, it will normally just be a lucky divine, which is sometimes good, sometimes useless. Sometimes if people, if some people don't buy it, but this definitely keep an eye out on this. So many people don't know this is where that very valuable seed comes from. And if you get it, it pays for the entire, uh, investment of four harvests. If you're using the sextant. Now this one on the right is how you get reforged more likelies. I've talked about this all the time, a reforged more likely. Basically, it is a 100% more multiplier on having the same mods on your item and they can be rolled up to tier one. This is how a lot of my money is made through harvest is through the wild spike back grain. But it can also give you keep prefix and keep suffix as well, but it can also brick, which is why it's not tier S because you could just get a reforge less likely, which I haven't really found a great use for besides maybe tailwind boots. But yeah, there you go. So there's your tier S tier B offering of the goddess and div card sacrifice. This is very valuable towards the end of a league because people that are quitting the league start buying a sacrifice divination for upwards of one plus exalts. And so it'll be good then. So definitely keep an eye on it. But this one on the left, the upgrade offering to of the goddess, it will very rarely be upgrade gift of the goddess, like an offering to the gift of the goddess. Dedications of the goddess are 20 chaos right now in bulk. And, uh, but offerings are great. But honestly, I think this seed is actually weighted. I think getting a gift of the goddess is exceptionally rare. And that's why it's tier B. Now our reforge priority at tier S, I have crit and defense because uh, I think flasks are very strong right now. Tier A, everything else except lightning. Lightning is trash. Uh, there's so many different ways to use reforges. So obviously that's why I don't have much detail here because it's so varied. Uh, go check out the videos where I go over how I find, find my reforges so you can have your own tier list for reforges. Um, or I just, you know, I have my spreadsheet on the Patreon. But anyway, I want to go over just a little bit more over these seeds so I can uh, help out for other questions. Now, if we go down to our tier 
two seeds over here. Um, no, yeah, tier is our jewel implicits. People on TFT do buy jewel implicits, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's say you have like jewel implicits on prismatic jewels. Sometimes people pay 15 chaos each for those. And then on our gems here, you could get a faceter's lens. It is very rare, but if you have imp corrupted level three empowers, those are actually a good margin now. If you get a turn, uh, sacrifice a corrupted gem and get 50% of the XP as a faceter's, definitely use a level three empower on those. Now, the other one is the quality modification weapons, this red seed right here. This is how you get the uh, enchanted weapons, so definitely uh, think about that. It is not massive high priority because you could get a bad enchant, but those ones I talked about at the start, uh, if, if your other plot's not looking too juicy, definitely get that. Now, uh, that's about all I want to talk about here and cover. And, yep. So, I figured I'd give an example of some plots. Uh, this one on the left... I would definitely pick this because we do have that tier, um, you know, that tier A wild spike back. I could get some more likelies from this. And uh, the other one does not really have anything of value besides the defense S tier reforge. But to be honest, I would prefer the more likelies because more likelies have made me a lot of money to sleep. If we move on to another one, modify scarab, I see immediately and I would go for this because it is a tier um, A seed. And this one does not have any other uh, seeds that stand out to me besides some life reforges. But at this point in the league, I don't really value reforges as much as I do like the other crafts. Uh, such as this one right here, the wild homunculus. We, we talked about this. This is S tier seeds. This has zero F -tier, S tier seeds over here. And so this is an easy, easy pick for me. is because of the fossils, delirium, orbs, oils, and catalysts. And this one right here it might be a hard choice, but I would definitely go for this blue plot on the left because of the exchange unique bestiary or Harby items. Because, like we talked about, um, the Parandas part is gone now, and so you're only going to get bestiary or Harbinger, which is guaranteed profit. This one does not have guaranteed profit, but this one does. I also forgot to talk about but socket color ones. You could get non-blue to blue socket, non-red to red, which do sell on TFT, so definitely think about that. But that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope I was able to help you out. A lot of questions I also get is how to farm rep in TFT. Now, the only thing I can really tell you is that at this point in the league, TFT is a lot of money. And so you can make a lot of me just from flash, just from enchants and the things I've talked about. But if you want to sell like keep prefix, keep suffix, you really do need to rely on TFT. And the best way I can, I will probably have a tutorial out on how to use TFT soon. Um, but the best thing I can recommend is just collecting reforges if you don't know how to use them and try to sell them on TFT for cheap or almost free just to farm vouchers. It's only 20 vouchers, I believe, to get trusted. And then you're, you're pretty good to go for a lot of crafts in the game. Uh, you may be asked to provide collateral, which you should only ever trust someone who's very high rep if you're going to give them collateral for a craft. But that is what I always recommend. That is how I farmed my rep before I was a content creator. Anything was just selling reforges for dirt cheap. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. And I will see you in the next one.